We're here at the Tyneside Cinema ahead of the premiere here in Newcastle of Halfway. We've got the director here, Daisy Mayo Hudson. Daisy, how are you today? I'm very well. Excited to be in Newcastle. It's a very exciting place to be. Uh, so, we're here for the film Halfway. It's a film that you've directed based on your very own experiences. Could you tell us a bit more about uh, the, the journey of making the film and what the film's about? Um, so, in 2013, my mum, sister and I were made homeless. We were privately renting um, a house for 13 years and also on the council house list for that time. And our landlord decided to sell off the property. And when we came to look for other places to live, everything was completely unaffordable. I got the phone call from my mum to say that we we're going to be homeless um, whilst doing my dissertation at uni and then I came back to kind of help put all the stuff in boxes and it was a really like horrifying experience to um, feel so powerless in that situation and so I never made a film before but I decided to start filming it because then I could feel active about a situation um, and it felt like I was actually doing something. To to get the you know the, to get the, the gusto to make a film about such a harrowing situation uh, other people might not do that as such some people might just like sign a petition or something what what was it about the situation that felt you so so much to actually make something yeah. that was powerful enough to to get the message out i've always been really interested in documentary as a as a way of connecting the dots between people's experiences or kind of um kind of lifting the lid on certain certain things and allowing people to tell their stories. I find it really powerful. And I felt that when this happened to us, there wasn't really anyone that could help us and there wasn't really anything that I could do to make it better. But I felt like if I could film it, I had no idea what it would become. And I'd never made a film before, but I felt like if I could film it, then I was doing something about it. So I, I went for a trial day. Um, me, my mum, my sister went out for a day and I just st started filming them in the car and they were hilarious on camera. So natural and so honest, emotionally honest. And I thought, okay, this is could be something. And then I just started filming everything. And at the beginning, it's very like home movie, handheld camera style. Um, for kind of, I guess, film lovers, you'll notice that my style improves throughout the film um, just by filming every day. I filmed 250 hours, so I filmed every day for a year, and that really allowed me to develop my style quite naturally, and, and it became quite an intuitive process. So yeah, and then when I got to the end, I didn't really want anything to do with the footage at that point because it was so emotionally draining for me. Um, but I was lucky enough to bring on producers who I'd gone to university with and they said, hang on, you've got something bigger than just you filming in a hostel here, this is really powerful. And then that's when kind of the whole, the film really, really kind of took off. What were the biggest challenges making a film like this? Obviously it's very traumatic, something happened within your own life and your own family life. Um, what what were the things that were the hardest to, to put to screen? Yeah, I mean, I. I always say I would never trust anyone else to make a documentary about me or my family. I only trust me because I know exactly what what I want to say about the world. The, the whole point of the film that is it's supposed to be counter narrative to all kind of like this whole scrounger narrative that's put out about working class families or um, and so that was kind of I only trusted myself. So I knew that it would be OK. Um, but obviously there are moments when perhaps I could I could have put the camera down but for me I needed to keep the camera on because people need to see how hard it is and how tough it is and so I can only thank my family for being so selfless because really what they've done is put themselves kind of well they've really opened themselves up but it's had a really profound effect on people when they watch it as well so yeah I think it's always hard but I would only ever trust myself <laughs> Uh, the film has done phenomenally well. I've seen you on the TV, on the radio, all sorts, everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, all across the internet. Um, it's it's obviously getting the message across, and we've 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 seen a lot of films sem tackling similar subjects. We've seen I Daniel Blake last year, uh, which really got the film out on a on a wide scale. Uh, do you think the film can have that same level of impact? Do you think these kind of films can inspire social change? Yeah, I think what was powerful about I Daniel Blake was the the narrative to. Um, people kind of that are going through um, having to go through job centres and wait for benefits and stuff like that um, was so strong against those people it, like that it was so dehumanizing to people that had 
her, that were going through that. And so what I, Daniel Blake, did was completely humanise, transform how people thought. So a lot of the press that was surrounding it was a, as a result of people kind of having that moment of realisation, and that was really powerful. I think with this film, people have that moment of realisation 100%. Um, I think it's not... The counter-narrative to homelessness isn't so strong because now it's such a problem of the mainstream. Like, you can't... You know, every single person almost is going through some kind of struggle when it comes to housing. So it's not going to have that relevation, re relevatory moment, but I think it it does really humanise kind of what... Um, what it means to be homeless a, a lot of my kind of the thing that i really wanted to get across was the mental health aspect of what it feels like to lose your home and then be in that kind of stalemate situation so i hope that comes across also the film is having um very pos taking positive steps towards actually influencing change in terms of policy because we have an official partnership with shelter um and so now it's screamed at the houses of parliament it's going to scream screen to the london mayor um shortly so it's kind of like a slow burner but hopefully i can like connect all the dots and try and not only shift public consciousness but also affect po policy that's that's like the dream well um hopefully it does get shown to these uh, prime minister uh, prime ministers and politicians uh you, you sat alongside one on channel 4 news oh, yes. uh, chris philp and um, he said uh, that a rise in population is to blame and that uh, they are building more affordable homes as a result is that a good enough excuse for you i know that on the actual show you weren't given a lot of time which is the problem with tv yeah. but on the radio you can have as much time as you want uh, so <laughs> what is your response to that um i think I, i'm very fed up of of kind of this government saying that they're actively doing stuff to make to you know solve the housing crisis because since they've supposedly been actively doing stuff homelessness figures have gone up and like in unprecedented levels so to say that it's a uh, population problem isn't a good enough excuse like this is this is our population it is a growing population and we should have the responsibility to house the people that live that live here and um i think that there's a lot of rhetoric that the Tories kind of make use of of like we're building more homes but kind of what I said on Channel 4 News is what homes are they? They have to be affordable, they have to also include council housing that's such an important part of British society you know it's kind of the very like bedrock of of what's allowed working class people to flourish is the fact that we can have housing that's completely affordable within our salary price range that still needs to happen and unfortunately ever since the 80s kind of like the um, council housing has been at shortfall with things like right to buy also in London councils are actually just knocking it down straight away and just putting luxury properties so I can just see through it it's all rubbish they're just talking absolute rubbish and um and I think it is going to take like a huge kind of public outcry to really put the pressure on on people on politicians because it, it's going to take a huge amount of political will because unfortunately at the minute there are a lot of people making money from the housing crisis exactly the way it is so yeah kind of like with the working tax credit outcry that we had we need the same kind of like shock horror moment and really we should be there already because you know the, the, we're in dire straits like people are dying like uh, there was newborn babies dying in cars coming straight out of hospital because they have nowhere to live um people are living in horrible circumstances and really we need that public outcry as soon as possible so uh this is going to be heard by some students a lot of students um who'll all be interested by something you wrote for the times uh, i'm a graduate with a job why am i homeless this is a real problem now isn't it that, that graduates are going to be leaving university with prospects that are quite low um, what would you say to them as somebody who's been through university? What was what was it like for you? I think there's um, With university there's an assumption that you're kind of like the you know the The elite in some ways that you're you're gonna You're already doing really well f for yourself and you're gonna go on to be even better and that is the case but what that article was about is like it was kind of playing on on the assumption that I am supposed to be this kind of um academic elite yet I can't even afford a place to live so how does that where kind of how does that even happen and um in terms of what am I supposed to be giving hope or despair to I think your honest opinion I think um 
it is hard when you leave uni it's hard you've got the uni blues then you're also trying to find a job then particularly in London things it's just so unaffordable but I think that's why like activism is so important and also university despite regardless of whether it gets you a job or whether it gets you a home or whether it gets you you know fifty thousand pounds a year I think it's such an incredible and important thing that everyone should have the opportunity to do because it's you know it's enlightening and what I learned in three years it can't be monetized like the I just think that you shouldn't think like I, I did this to get a job you should think I did this to make my brain bigger uh, so people who have these kind of have the same sort of voice as you who've got something very important to say uh, what would you say to them to just pick up a camera and do it like you did yeah I think a lot of the what a lot of the thing which I'm actually now finding quite difficult with my second film is to get over the fear to actually just do it and because as you can for so long just think oh is this good enough uh, maybe I'll just do a bit more research shall I just you know is this going to be a, a thing and and so actually just making the first leap of just picking up a camera or however you use your art or your writing or whatever to to um negotiate the world that you're living in is really important just to get over that first hurdle and just do it because you can never underestimate how important your experience is and you might have quite like a nuanced experience of the world but it will be really interesting to other people if as long as you have a story to tell make sure you know it's a it's an important story and that's when people really get behind you as well so yeah don't be scared just do it and um that's mainly and don't worry about the money just keep filming <laughs> and and the, the rest will fall into place you've mentioned the second film i mean you're saying you've got sort of that hurdle to jump over but what have you got what have you got next in mind what kind of ideas are, are kicking about um i i do feel that my voice in this kind of film landscape is is about like talking about um welfare and talking about british experience and not british in the traditional sense like what what does it mean to be to be in britain today for all different people and allowing everyone to have their say um i also am starting to develop fiction film ideas so i want to get into eventually um fi feature fiction i think it's really important if you've got if you're a woman director with important stuff to say then you should just keep pushing yourself to do it because they're, they're voices that need to be be heard in the film industry so yeah, um, the the next thing is develop my uh, is kind of start filming my second documentary, will, which will continue on the theme of motherhood. That was a very strong theme in Halfway, and then also develop develop my fiction ideas. It's all very exciting. Uh, but in the meantime, Halfway continues to travel across the UK. Where's next after this? Oh yes, on my tour. Um, I'm going to. I've got three dates in London again, four dates in London this week, um, one at Bertha Dock House, which is um, a really prestigious place to be screening a documentary, I'm really excited. And I'm going to be doing a Q&A with Roger Grafe, who's um, uh, a really prolific filmmaker. And then after that, I'm going to Cambridge, and then the film's going to Birmingham, but without me, and Leicester, and yeah, I mean, any cinemas, independent cinemas that want to get in touch and book to have halfway show, that's kind of how it's all been done. And like we're self-distributing this film, um, which is hard work, but it's, you know, it's all done kind of on word of mouth and kindness of strangers. So it's been a really amazing experience to have that. So hopefully pe more people will book dates. And it's all the more worth it to get the message out, of course. Yeah, that's that's a huge drive for me. Like, we don't have any money for marketing, advertising, no billboards, anything like that. It's literally all done on, like, social media or people telling their friends or radio and TV and stuff. Um, but, yeah, the message is super important. And when people do see the film, even if there's only five people in the cinema, they have such an experience that makes it all kind of worthwhile. Um, so, yeah, just keep keep on fighting <laughs> uh, well we're very excited to watch the film in just half an hour's time but uh, Daisy May Hudson thank you very much for joining us on the Spark Film Show thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure